Hello and welcome to Region Locked. There's certainly a large number of absurd or bizarre games to come from the minds of Japanese game developers, and it seems to us that many of those creations saw prevalence with the release of Sony's PlayStation 2. From the likes of Katamari Damacy's hectic, colourful imaginings, to a game allowing us to experience life as Mr. Mosquito, the console seemed to be open doors to absurdist humour and imaginative gameplay mechanics. Today, we'll be looking at two games by the same developer, both left in Japan and both published by Sony themselves. The development studio Alveon had somewhat humble beginnings, with little fanfare for their first few releases. After the release of their two PS2 titles, the companies would work on games such as Malicious, Siren Blood Curse, and Ape Escape Academy. The two games we'll be looking at for this episode will be Poiny's Poin and Chain Dive, starting with Poiny. Poiny's Poin was released in 2002, putting the player into the role of Poiny, a strange creature who lives in a lively place known as Jellytown. Poiny manages to become separated from his mother when he meets a young girl by the name of Lilin-chan. Lilin tells Poiny that she will help him find his way home, but instead asks a favour of him, to use the various orbs around Jellytown, known as Poin, to solve a series of strange incidents which are occurring, in order to return the town to its once peaceful state. Lilin provides Poiny with a living Poin simply referred to as Poin, a toxic-tongued duck-like creature who protrudes from Poiny's backside. Poiny is special and one of the few able to make use of points because, as Lilin describes it, Points can only be used by the pure and, uh, stupid at heart. Poiny is pit against a vindictive young girl called Lolo, who controls an army of cat like creatures called Hellnyaos. These creatures are able to create toxic points, which corrupt whomever they are used upon, causing them to become erratically confused and violent. Poiny's Poin plays like many typical 3D platformers, with the player navigating large areas and solving puzzles. Most puzzles involve the use of points to control NPCs' emotions. By grabbing a Poin, the player is able to throw it at any living creature and alter its state of mind. Blue points will cause the target to be overwrought with sadness. Red points will invoke anger, and yellow points will make characters happy. While these different colours can be used as they come, should the player need to solve a puzzle with a colour not present, they may be able to combine two different points to create the remaining third colour. Combining two points of the same colour will simply cause them to disappear. Eventually, a character's emotions will resolve themselves, or the player can use a point of the same colour as their emotion to erase the effect. This is how the effects of the toxic points can be reversed. Poins also serve other functions beside their mood-altering capabilities, such as being used as platforms. Poiny is also able to grab points and use them to float over large distances. By manipulating the emotions of various characters in the world, Poiny is able to solve a variety of puzzles, such as causing characters to become angry enough to damage their surroundings, opening new paths. A variety of creatures inhabit the world of Jellytown, including living eclairs. By grabbing these creatures, it's possible to recover health. There are also purple eclairs, which instead will reduce Poiny's health, and golden eclairs, which are hidden, and when eaten, will increase the player's maximum health. There are also large eclairs, which fully restore Poiny's health without being eaten. Poiny's main goal is to free various people around town from the effects of the poisonous Poins, and by helping them, they will help Poiny on his journey to reunite with his mother. Not much has been written about the game online, or information is just generally quite scarce, but an interesting point from our playthroughs is how it asks the player's age at the beginning of the game. Having played through twice at two different ages, we couldn't discern any differences. Poiny's Point may have never released in any English territories, but it does contain not just fully English text translation, but also has complete English voice acting alongside Japanese. Come over tonight and let's boogie down and party! The game did allegedly receive a release in China, with English being used as the primary language of the game in the region. The game's voice acting may be familiar to an English-speaking audience. The game's English voice acting was actually supervised by Christian Storms, the supervisor for the first three seasons of South Park's Japanese dub. Most notably, many have pointed out the similarities between the voice of Poiny's Duck character and Eric Cartman from South Park. Hey Green, do you like a 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I made you eat your parents. Christian Storms has also worked in Japan for a long time, assisting with many Japan related TV shows, as well as subtitling over 70 Japanese feature films into English. One character in the game, a dazzling hero from TV, is named Bon Jovi. As you may have guessed, this is an obvious reference to the famed American rock group Bon Jovi. Poiny also has a habit of celebrating by claiming that you can't touch this. A popular phrase coined by MC Hammer with his hit song you can't touch this. Next up, a move into a more mature realm of PlayStation 2 games, Chain Dive. Chain Dive was released in 2003, putting the player in the role of Shark, a mysterious man with an almighty biomechanical suit. He fights to protect the people and princesses living on the planet Elm after menacing invaders do what they do best and start invading. Shark appears just as the planet is on the brink of collapse. He is aided by his arsenal, a sword called the Unbreakable and a grappling hook called a Plasma Chain. The game plays across a 2D axis while being rendered in 3D. The player's main capabilities lie in being able to swing from various green orbs found throughout stages, allowing them to effectively slingshot themselves, picking up momentum and propelling at high speeds across environments assisted by their double jump. The player can also hang from points and swing around them. Most stages have an abundance of orbs that can be latched onto, however, at times this proves to be a part of the game's main challenge. Orbs can be placed in an inconsistent manner, leaving the player falling in hopes of a grapple point to get back into the fast-paced aerial assault, or having to utilize frozen foes in order to ascend higher. Unbreakable isn't actually able to directly damage enemies, instead it will freeze the enemy into a giant block of ice, turning them into their own grapple point. By swinging through the enemy, they will be defeated. Some enemies require multiple hits or higher speeds in order to destroy them. By swinging through multiple enemies in quick succession, the player can build up a combo score in order to recover health, with better performances recovering more. The player is able to run out of stamina on their main attack, however. When the gauge is fully depleted, they are unable to freeze enemies with the Unbreakable and will have to wait for a cooldown period. Shark can also make use of a special attack, which freezes all enemies on screen. All enemies will remain frozen until the combo is broken. This attack can be risky, however, as the player must sacrifice a significant portion of their health to activate it. Shark can also save various damsels by picking them up and carrying them to safety, though while they are being carried, the player is unable to attack and must place them down before engaging enemies. Levels have different goals rather than sticking to the same task throughout. These can range from navigating to the end of a stage like a typical platformer, protecting NPCs in escort missions, and even runner stages. There are also large boss battles throughout the game. Each stage ends with a rating for the player based on enemy, damage, time, combo, and rescue when applicable. Each of the relatively short stages is bookended with very long, dialogue-heavy, story-based cutscenes. Environments might appear fairly empty by many other PlayStation 2 game standards, but this was an intentional choice by the developer to ensure that the title runs at a solid 60 frames per second throughout, with varying degrees of success. As much of the game relies on its fast-paced movement, the game was also visually optimized for motion. The environments that the player is put through also range dramatically in presentation, from dark derelict cities to floating ruins in blue skies. While the game is relatively short, with the player being able to reach the end within just a few hours, there are two additional modes that are unlocked after completion, Time Trials and Combo Trials. Alvian aren't particularly well known for their self-headed projects, having only created a small handful of their own games. This isn't to say that Alvian doesn't have a strong connection to the industry. The company has been contracted on a number of high-profile games as a development support team for several major studios, including Platinum Games, Sony, and Nintendo. Seeing the fast-paced action of Chain Dive, it's almost no wonder that Alvian would later be tasked with helping Platinum Games create Bayonetta and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. With regards to Poiny's Point, however, Sony may have been reluctant to publish the game anywhere but Japan simply because of the game's content. People online liken the tone of the game's dialogue to a more friendly Conker's Bad Fur Day. Within the first 10 minutes of the game, we are already introduced to a flirtatious duck who refers to the young protagonist as a wet ass. The contrasting tones would have probably been contentious in a Western market. Topping that, 
The game was reviewed as a fairly mixed bag, many praising the title's interesting premise of manipulating emotions to solve puzzles, but finding issue with its short playtime and general unpolished nature. For Chain Dive, while the game was praised and received a lot of recognition through word of mouth, it was ultimately similar to Pointy's Point in its short playtime. While these titles may be fun to revisit in today's age, at the time, Sony had a considerable number of games on the platform which had larger scopes than we had ever seen before. Both games could have stood out had they appeared on earlier hardware, mainly concentrating on their mechanics over length, but with the PlayStation 2's significant boost in disk storage space, expectations were higher. Is that Clefairy? Help! Oh, Malcavio. My thumb is stuck to my face. Me, Jedistartles, Chad Barnon, and Corey Nelson filled our water pistols up with super glue and had a fight. Is your boy Beowulf about? Hey, what's up? Do you think you could help? Don't get me involved. Call the three master gamers. In the meantime, let's get wrecked. I know you've been stealing shipments of booze from Trevor Wooten. And that's how Vidas Vanus, Mike Sinistar, and Petit Mew found the frog suit. What I actually asked was, do you have Everett Lathrop's legendary comic? Yeah, I heard why Moop Queen Mab has been after Shark issue one for years. But it's heavily guarded by Guillermo Chavez and Robert Cox. Warning, this is an error 1355. The comic stash has been breached. Oh, foogly wooglies. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to the patrons. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, and if you really enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. My name's Greg, and I'll see you next time. Probably.